Both of these projects are interdisciplinary in practice, meaning they're moving between film, video, the internet, new media, and photography. I've also done a bit of writing around uh, the works, and so this is where my interdisciplinary practice, but also my intersectional research begins. So this is a map of a uh, history of colonialism in, throughout the North, um, throughout the Americas, which I'll be focusing on in the photographic series as well as in the Pangea of Solidarity. It's a big map, a lot of words, but the questions that I think um, are much more pertinent in thinking about what is Pangea as a collective, as a body mass, right? Literally, a Pangea is a solid uh, mass of land thought to how the world began, right? So I'm borrowing from a historical or landmass perspective, but also what is solidarity? How are we in solidarity with each other? How are coming together, having affinity, building together um, important? And so both of those words are key in the first project. Also, where are the borders and what uh, does no borders signify? So this is the first piece. It's a new media piece that lives online. It is an animated GIF. And what's missing, um, right now this is mapping the 21 countries where Spanish is the, the language that's spoken. And what it is is signifying, right, indigenous populations, folks that were there, the history literally of colonialism, but visualizing the land masses, so the Pangea of Solidarity is uh, visualized here. And so it's ever revolving, it continues, but it, it, if we think about the internet and the information and the access, it's a never ending source of information. So this is the um, Pangea Solidarity in terms of thinking about history of colonialism. And I'll, and I'll get to a bit later with the photographs of how colonialism has impacted what we see, what art we see, what art don't we see, right? And thinking about histories of around uh, gender and uh, race. So this is the first uh, new media piece, uh, again, visualizing this Pangea solidarity of what's there, but also what's missing, and what's not there. So I also start this out with thinking about, especially the theme change, right? Um, how the master's tools never dismantle dismantle the master's house. So how do we in, induce or create change to move forward? So in recreating and not changing, right, um, things are destined to not change, right? So I put this here to really address how uh, the theme in terms of this particular uh, presentation, but also how do we look at images? And so this is moving into photographs that have been melded with 19th century paintings, so they're composites. They take on a very painterly quality, right? But the foreground, and this is the photographic series, The Last Seduction, La Seduction Fatale, and it's appropriated, right? It's borrowed from a museum in Buenos Aires that had an exhibition of the same title. And so what I'm doing is infusing, building them together where the backgrounds uh, holding and are borrowed from the, uh, from the original paintings in the 19th century, but also the exhibition was focusing on painters of European and also uh, South American descent. And so what I've now, um, I'm highlighting in terms of the foreground is that I'm inserting often what colonialism or representations of that era have eradicated. It's thinking about race, thinking about gender, so infusing uh, a new foreground to, again, have conversations around change, around um, who was not pictured, who uh, was painted, who wasn't painted, class, demographic. So these are a conversation, an ongoing conversation in thinking about um, histories of migration, erasure, colonialism, race, gender, or genders. And so what we have is uh, quite a combination of photography and painting, which also has its own interesting history and in thinking about how much painting changed after the uh, photography was invented. Right. And then you see, too, that there are artifacts that remain, like in the bottom of the lakes. And also I want to stress that 
these paintings often in the 19th century, there was a lot of nudes and um, all of them were nudes. So <clears throat> in terms of female figures are often depicted that way. So th most of them are clothed, but in terms of the artifacts, they remain. So uh, not only has the figure been um, introduced, I've then also kept some of the remnants of the uh, painting itself. And this is just an example of also how they're framed. They take on a very 19th century style in terms of this classical ornate framing. So it situates the painting slash photograph into uh, that era. And then also I think it's important that one of these, the figure is non-existent. So what has been it was a female nude, but what has been removed or isn't there that we now have a scan painting that's now been edited and photographed and then printed, right? So this also is a conversation around technology and how we access information, right? Going back to the spaces of solidarity and the new media piece, how do we often access and digest information and art if we're not there in person? So it's gone through quite a transformation from its original state into right, the digital realm. So some of the questions that I think are very important to consider too is thinking about how are we moving through spaces and countries? What languages do we speak and why? What are the histories of that language, right? Or in terms of languages. Um, and how has colonialism affected representation in art? So what are we seeing? What are we not seeing? What has been erased, eradicated? What's there? But also, this is us. This this uh, body of work is also a critique in thinking about what um, museums or institutions are showing or not showing. And so, I like to um, research is very formative and important part of my art making. And often, research um, or it navigates my ideas first. Right? So it's really indicative of how I make work or what medium I use. And so I think in terms of change and I think um, the theme, right? I'm just going to go back to the last, whoa, TED Talk. Back to the land masses. Like literally these are land masses. However, what do they signify? What change is happening? What change are we doing? Thank you very much.